Today we're going to continue working on our comments section, and for this episode, we're going to focus on trying to get the buttons down here inside our comments to only appear if we're actually logged in, and if we're logged in as the same person who actually posted the post. So the first thing we need to do is, first of all, as you guys can see, we do accept the buttons here. If I were to log in, because right now we're not logged in, you guys can see that I have two users down here. I have the admin and I have Daniel. So right now, because I'm logged in as admin, we should only be able to see the buttons inside our admin comments. So that's what we're gonna fix in this episode. Now, the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go into our code and we're gonna go into our comments.ink.php file where we have all our functions. Now, inside our functions, we're gonna find the one called get comments because that's the one we use inside our front page, essentially to get all the comments showing inside the website. Now, inside our get comments function, we first of all go into the database, we get all the comments, we actually run the query we have, and then we spit them out. After we've done that, we actually go in and we get the ID from the user who's actually inside the post and spit them out inside the post so we can see who the author is. So we need to make sure we actually go in and first of all, check if we're actually logged in. If we're not logged in, we want to disable the buttons we have down here. If we're logged in, but we're not the same user who actually posted a post, which we actually do have right here, then we want to tell it that we shouldn't show it either. So the first thing we need to do is, first of all, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we can actually disable the actual buttons down here if we're not logged in. And in order to do that, we need to rearrange things a little bit. Because right now, as you guys can see, the closing P tag we have here and our form, or both forms, and our closing div down here, actually all of them inside one echo, which is gonna give us a couple of problems later on. So let's actually go ahead and just close off the echo up here, where we have the P tag, and we're gonna go ahead and open up an echo right before the form. We're also gonna go ahead and close off our echo um, right after the form as well. And we're gonna go ahead and include another echo right before we close off the div tag. So now we can actually go in and take the entire echo that only has the buttons in it and tell it to disable this echo when we're not locked in. So now that we have this, we can actually save it. And as you guys can see, it didn't actually change anything inside the website, which it shouldn't. And now we can actually go ahead and create our if statements. So right before we have the form or like the buttons down here, we want to create an if statement. Now this if statement, at least the first one, is gonna check if we're locked in. Because if we were to just go ahead and check if our current locked in ID matched up with the ID from the user inside the post, then it's gonna give us an error message if we don't actually check first if we're locked in at all. So inside our if statement, we're gonna say is set. And inside our parentheses, we're gonna check if we have a session called ID. So now that we checked if we're actually locked in, we can go and create another if statement inside here. That's gonna go ahead and check if the author of the post matches up with our current session ID. So the way we're gonna do that is we're just gonna go ahead and copy our session ID. And then we're gonna write equal equal, which means we're now checking if our session matches with something. And then we're just gonna go ahead and get the actual ID from our user that we got from the database. Now we did actually get it up here, um, but the a row we have down here that we actually spit out is actually the username, not the user ID. So we want to actually take the user ID from inside the database by instead of getting the UID, we're gonna get the ID. So now essentially we're matching up the users that's actually logged in with our common uh, user. Now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and copy the entire echo we have down here with the form in it or the forms, plural, because we have two. And we're gonna go ahead and insert it inside our if statements. And just make sure we move everything out so it looks nice, like so. Now that we have this, we can actually go back to the website, refresh. As you guys can see, the bottom buttons under Daniel user actually disappeared. So now we can only edit the information of the post of the ones we're actually logged in as. If I were to actually log out right now, you guys can see we have no buttons, which is what we want. Now, if you have to think about future users, let's say I want to be able to reply 
to people who I'm not logged in as, then we need to include a reply button. But as well, if we're not logged in at all, we need to put something to indicate that you need to be logged in before we can actually do anything with these posts down here. So inside our code again, we're gonna go ahead and make sure we first of all add the reply button. So after the last if statement we created inside where we checked if we're actually logged in, we're gonna create an else statement. Inside this else statement, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of copy one of the forms you have up here because I don't see a reason to write it again, um, which could possibly be just this one. It's not gonna look like this form in the end, but we're just gonna paste it in here for now so we have a template to go from. So now essentially we do actually have a form, we actually have a delete button that shows if we are not the user we're locked in as. So we're gonna go ahead and change this one to reply, like so. Let's actually as well go ahead and change the class name because right now if we do actually refresh the website and log in, we need to make sure we do that first. You guys can see that the reply button is not on the right side. It's actually right underneath the delete buttons. So in order to move it, we need to have the same styling as the actual edit buttons. So we're gonna say class, it's gonna be edit form instead of delete form. As you guys can see now, if we refresh, it's now on the right side. Now it is a bit too big. It's touching the side, but you can always change that in the styling. So you could also have a reply button styling instead of reply form. Now, the next thing we need to do is if we're not logged in, we want to come with an error message. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log out so we can see what we're doing. And if you go back to the code, we're gonna create an else statement for our first if statement, which is the one that we have right here, that goes down to here. So I'm gonna write else. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, either you could just not do anything because if you're not locked in, you shouldn't be able to do anything. But just for information wise, I would like to tell people that they need to be locked in in order to actually reply. So I'm gonna go ahead and echo. You need to be locked in to reply, like so. We're gonna go ahead and include some p tags around this because otherwise it's gonna look weird because the styling is gonna be off. And we can actually go ahead and give this one a class. So I'm just gonna copy a class tag from up here, change the class name to, let's create comment message. It's probably not the best name to choose for this, but just because we're having an exercise, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it something. We're gonna go into our style sheet, go to the very bottom here, create the class, and we're gonna go ahead and say float right, because we need to make sure this text is actually on the right side when it needs to be. Let's actually go ahead and refresh the browser just to see what it looks like. If I actually go ahead and log out, there we go. You can see it's at the very bottom. So let's actually go ahead and change the styling here. If we actually go up into our comment message, I'm gonna say position, absolute, top, let's say 10 pixels, right, 10 pixels. And let's actually check if, let's just check what class it is. Uh, there it is. Our div called comment box. Let's make sure it has some position attached to it. Otherwise, this is not gonna work. It does not. Actually, yeah, it does, right here. So this should essentially work. If we refresh, you guys can see we now have a message up here. That's basically all we can do uh, for now if we want to you know, change up the information here. As you guys can see, if I do actually log back in, maybe as Daniel this time. Now you guys can see that we can reply to the admin instead. And now we can delete the comments from Daniel. So we can actually write something. And as you guys can see, now we have two posts from Daniel. That's essentially how we change the buttons over here, depending on who you are. Again, like I said, the reply buttons, we can always change with styling. Um, I want to answer one question that I got in the comments uh, a few days ago. Some people asked me about when we used our session ID inside, for example, here, when we want to check if we're logged in, if it was possible to also just save the username inside our 
session variable. And it is. And the way we could do that would actually be if we go down to where we get our login down here. You guys can see that our if statement, when we log in, saves the ID of our user inside a session ID called ID. If you want to save the username as well, we can just copy this line, change it to UID, and then the row should be UID. That's basically it. So now we can also save the username inside our session variable, which can make it easier sometimes. You know, like when we had to create our, what do you call it, somewhere. Uh, if we want to get the username like we did up in the get comments, we actually had to go into the user table and actually get the username of the person with the ID that we had. So in order to avoid having to do that, we could also save the user name inside our session variables. That's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.